Okay, in today's video, we're going to be installing a new toy in the gym. Uh, something I've been wanting for a while. You notice it's uh, very important that we do not open this box with a knife. This is very, very important. Yeah. Oh well. Get everything unpacked here, get rid of the bubble wrap. Look at the instructions, which uh, pretty much say I put the bolts in the holes. Not the most helpful stuff in the world, but it's uh, not the most complicated apparatus either. But yeah, you'll notice here we have uh, concrete acres concrete anchors, but uh, we end up running the store and getting a bunch of lags, which will be much more useful for actually attaching this thing to the wall at the house. So you see here I'm uh, lining up in the middle of the uh, four planks I'm going to be using as a backing. Uh, going to draw some circles on here for where the uh, where the lags are going to go. And now I'm measuring out to see where the uh, the lags that go in the center studs are going to be two studs in between the uh, between the arms there. And I'm just kind of doing this by eye, seeing what makes the most sense. And I wound up going with about two inches for uh, two inches between the lags on each panel, and then three inches between the bottom lag on one and the top lag on the other. So now you can see a bunch of magnets I stuck on the wall. These are all uh, sticking to the nails that hold the drywall up. This is a good way to uh, find where the studs are and get a good, you know, just kind of overall picture of where, where the studs are on your wall. And you can just, you know, kind of wave the magnets around on the wall until you figure out, you know, until you get one to stick. And then from there, you can kind of guesstimate where the other ones are going to be. And it goes a little smoother from there. So what I'm doing right now is uh, going through and realizing that my studs are not equally spread apart with 48 inches in between uh you know across the four studs i was kind of expecting you know an, an even amount in between but we'll wind up finding that that's not the case i've got you know 15 here and 18 there and things don't really line up uh then i uh, just checked level on the ceiling there because you know i want to be able to measure down from the ceiling and i wasn't completely convinced that uh, that was going to turn out level so now you can see i've got the the laser lined up with where the magnets are showing where one of the studs is so pull a couple of magnets off, measure down from the ceiling, and put a dot right on the laser line for piloting the first screw. And right now I'm using a, using a bit that's a, a little bit smaller than I wound up going with, uh, which we'll see uh, turns out to be a little bit of a problem later, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So here again, we've got the laser lined up on the right-hand side now with uh, the magnets, pull a couple of magnets off because we're not gonna want them stuck back there. Uh, again, put a dot on the laser line at the uh, <coughs> height where we want the uh, top bolt. And that was the uh, first of many times that I have uh, measured my level here to make sure it's still 48 inches. Sometimes it changes. No, um, actually, it doesn't ever change, but I keep measuring it over and over again to make sure it's still 48 inches. And level, because even though we checked that the ceiling is level and the measurements are the same, we of course still need to make sure that our pilot holes are level. So we'll drive, you know, another pilot hole in here for the uh, other, you know, top lag on the top board. So now back down on the ground, we're starting to run the lags in and, you know, running straight through a knot here, not exactly optimal. And on the other side, uh, here you can see that uh, one edge of the boards is cut clean and the other edge is a little rough and natural. I decided to keep it that way. And uh, I've got the points of the lag sticking out here so that uh, I can use them to center in the holes on the wall to actually get this thing in place where I want it to go. So, sorry I didn't uh, move the camera up so you can actually see what I'm doing, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there soon enough. Okay. So now you'll see over on the right why the uh, what happens when your pilot holes are a little bit too small. I hadn't noticed it yet, uh, past me hadn't noticed it yet, but it did uh, split out a little bit there, but we'll deal with that later. And what I'm going through now is marking out where the, where the lags are going to go on that uh, right middle stud. So I did wind up moving up to a uh, larger larger pilot bit here.
and I lost the footage there of actually driving those in because I uh, learned that my camera only records for five to ten minutes at a time before it overheats. This is the uh, joy of using your phone as a video camera and is something I will have to look into in the future, but for the rest of this video just know that I keep walking behind the camera because I have to keep making sure it's still recording and uh, restart the video and things like that. Good times. So yeah, putting in second set of lags into the left hand stud here. You know, same trick, lining up the laser with the magnets and driving the lags into the stud. So again, you'll see here that we're lining up the uh, cut edge with the cut edge and leaving the natural edge on the left. And the laser now is lined up, uh, you can't really see it here, but uh, is lined up with the lags above. The ruler isn't really measuring anything other than height. I'm not actually, you know, lining it up on the lags to put in the next ones. The laser line is there, even though you can't really see it. So I'll run a couple more pilot holes. And we'll start a couple more lags, line everything back up, drive the lags in, and hey, my wife came home from work, so it's always good to have a uh, friend and helper to hang out with, make things a little easier for the rest of the project here. So now we're repeating the process on the other side. Tighten this up a little bit. Once again, measuring, you know, inch and a half or so in from the two by sixes that are cleaned up down to about five inches. And then, you know, throw in a couple more pilot holes and a couple more lags again. solid and seems pretty good. And now that I have a helper, I can uh, go a little quicker here. I don't have to keep bending down and dropping the board over and over again in order to do things. Again, lost footage, camera, phone, sad. So by this point, my arms are getting pretty tired. You'll see that this board keeps slipping and I keep fixing it. And uh, I actually wound up putting in the uh, left couple of lags here and then uh, giving up for the night because yeah, I'm a super wuss and holding uh, two by sixes up to the wall is uh, actually more work than it looks like. So throw in a couple more pilot holes and a couple more lags. Ah, that's right, I'm tired enough that I can't even do this at all. So I just throw in one lag, then I can stop holding the thing up there throw in the next pilot hole in the last lag. And then this is about the point where I gave up for the uh, first day. It was getting pretty late and I knew I wasn't going to actually hang the bar. So now we're into the next day. And I'm gonna take out that top screw, see if I figured out that it's a split. Yep, so here's yeah, I've realized that this is split out. I'm not very happy with it. So we're now going through filling the split with glue. Good times. Trying to get this actually deep into the crack is again harder than it looks, but uh, seemed to work. Seemed to work out pretty well. One of the things to uh, remember with wood glue is uh, wood glue is stronger than the wood itself. So if you can actually get it in there and get it all clamped together and to hold, that it will be stronger than it was before it ever cracked. So. It's always good to have giant clamps on hand, you know, just in case you need to randomly, you know, clamp together a bunch of two by sixes. Clean up the glue drips and the overrun. Clean up the end here. Throw the clamp back on, and we're just going to leave the clamp on now for you know a couple of days while we finish the project. So now we'll drill that out to with a uh, larger pilot, so that when we run the lag in, it doesn't split things apart. So now it seems to be seems to have gone together a lot better and 
you know, because I'm making this video a couple of days later, I can confirm that the uh, split has stayed not split. It is successfully glued together even without the clamp on there. So I'm pretty happy with how that uh, that repair job worked, even if the original original scenario wasn't wasn't super happy. So yeah, going through marking out the uh, pilot holes for the remaining lags. I'm really pretty impressed with myself that I didn't screw up any of the middle lags. Uh, they wound up looking uh, both, you know, looking and feeling really good, really solid. Uh, seems like a very me thing to accidentally put one of them off an inch or something like that. Uh, that didn't happen, and I'm super happy about that. Very happy with how that looks. Now this may look like I'm just kind of free drilling holes, but uh, you can kind of see that uh, these are the the circles that I had drawn before of where the where the holes go. I'm not again. I'm not super happy with the uh, holes going in, basically where the two boards come together. But again, this whole thing is you know very well attached to the wall. There's a lot of pressure there, so the boards aren't going to come apart. And uh, the lags are long enough that the main support is, you know, going straight into the studs anyway. So I'm I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, by the end of the project, the uh, bar is quite solid. So I'm happy happy with how it worked out. So hanging the first bar. Uh, here's where I realized that the. Uh, gun isn't actually going to fit in there and again more lost footage uh, you'll see how it works on the other side uh, i wound up actually using a uh, socket wrench to get the one in the middle i only realized well after i finished the project that i did actually have a, a uh, 3 8 universal joint that i could have thrown on there in order to uh, make things go a little faster and easier but uh, just using a socket wrench worked well enough uh, i think i used an extension bar here and just kind of pushed the thing to the side to get it started so i didn't have to use a, a ratchet the whole time to run it in but then it, i did wind up finishing it off over here with a ratchet which is good because it gives you that kind of hand feel of you know how tight is this anyway i wound up just checking the rest of them to get some consistency make sure it was as tight as i wanted them to be so Pretty happy with that there. And this is, uh, you can't see, but I was actually hanging on that, you know, no feet on the ground and all 250 something pounds of me. So I'm pretty happy that, you know, if one bar can hold and you can see it bends a little bit, but you know, that's to be expected with, you know, kind of light gauge steel like this. So it bends a little bit, but it doesn't, you know, give me any kind of scary feelings that it's gonna pull the lags out of the wall. So that's that's the part I'm more concerned about than any, any little bit of give in the middle. So now we've got a pair of uh, 17 millimeter sockets to you know pull this thing in with, and yeah, we'll see that there's you know a little bit of imperfection in you know the distance on the board versus the distance when the whole thing's tightened up, but it it comes together nice, nice and smoothly, and you know I'm okay with it being under a little bit of tension there. Um, looking back at the video, I'm a little surprised at how much the bar does bend under my weight, the actual metal of the bar, but, you know, it feels solid when, when using it, and I really don't think the, you know, the metal's going to go anywhere. And yeah, here's a, you know, just a set of resistance bands. I figured I would, you know, use them for various resistance band exercises, you know, see if I can do resistance band pull-ups, because I sure can't do real pull-ups, so we got to start somewhere. And, uh... Yeah, I've been uh, playing with lat poles and various other things, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, how the project came out overall, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch me put this together. So, like you have to do with every video, if you uh, like this and, you know, want to see more of this stuff, please like, please subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thanks.